to show Mom this loaf of bread that I'd made. <laughs> so I guess that's the reason I finally come up, you know, and fell back to the restaurant business. I knew something about food and handle it. That's where I got my idea of, I know you are taking certain seasoning for sausage, certain seasonings for dressings, and you could take combinations of some of those sizes and get another good seasoning. So that's where I developed my chicken recipe. And you had a place of business that was doing very, very well. It was located quite strategically, wasn't it, Colonel? Yes, right at the Forks of Highway, 25E and 25W. And 25 was the main highway north and south, you see, to Florida, into the Smoky Mountains. Well, they moved the junction downtown, and that cut my business some. And I knew that when they surveyed the interstate system, and it went seven miles back of me, that would leave me setting iron drive. So the question was, what can I save out of this wreck? People had liked my chicken, but I had nothing, no, any, anything to go by. There would be any opportunity for that. But anyhow, I undertook the franchise get my chicken. And I called it Kentucky Fried Chicken because I didn't want to be Southern Fried because everybody had a French fryer where you fried fish, shrimp, and onions. He side fried your French Southern Fried Chicken there. And that wasn't Southern Fried. So I called mine Kentucky Fried. And it's taken. It's it, Kentucky's a wonderful name, anyway. Yes. Probably. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So, at a very, very strategic time of your life, the highway came through and took all the business. The interstate came through and took all the traffic off of your particular road. Is it, Am I thinking correct? That's right. And you were going to lose, and you lost the business? That's right. I sold it at auction. Then. Sold it for auction? Just got enough out of it to pay my... Taxes and bills, you see. What age were you at that time, Colonel? I was uh, 66 years old when I started franchising in earnest. Well, but when you lost the business, when you lost your motel, you were really looking forward to this being the nest egg that you'd worked for all of your life. Yeah. And now it was gone, had yeah. to sell it at the auction. You were at 65 at that time? 65, well, 65, but I'd already had a guinea pig franchise out or two, knowing that I was going to have to franchise. I wanted to see how they would take, you see. So then I started franchising in earnest when I was 66 years old. I just say the morale of my life, don't quit at age 65. Maybe your boat hasn't come in yet. Mine hasn't. <laughs> and so, how long, at the, when you started with this franchise, how long before the real break came and it began to take off across the country? It began to do pretty good after about two years. See, I only got a nickel on every chicken that they sold. They got three dinners out of it but I got one nickel for the whole deal. But uh, you'd be surprised how fast old nickel added up. It, it, it gave me an insight into how much money is handled by five and 10 cent stores. But I, got, I finally got up to where I had an income of $1,000 a day, don't you see? <laughs> and of course, my only reason for selling the company was I didn't have anybody to succeed me in running it for my wife and two daughters if I was taken away. And Uncle Sam would also get to set a price, his price on it, you see, as an estate, and that'd probably wipe it out. So I had $2 million coming, and I thought, well, I take that, and that'll last us the rest of our lives. But it didn't, don't you see? So, <laughs> my first tithe, when I got my first payment on that $500,000, my first tithe was $50,000. I gave that to the Salvation Army. I didn't consider any of you fellows in your churches. I figured the Salvation Army was stooped pick up yes. a man as a woman yes. downtrodden and yes. try to rehabilitate yes. them more than any other church in the country. Right. Don't you agree with me? Right. How many, do you have any idea how many Kentucky Fried Chicken establishments there are in the world today? We're in 51 countries around the world with over 7,500 stores. Now, you sold out franchise here in this country. Do you still own it in Canada? No, I gave that to charity because I didn't want that to fall in my state. I didn't sell it at the time I sold it in America. I kept Canada. And then I realized that that would fall into my estate for taxes. So the thing to do, me and the Canadians made it. Didn't owe anybody anything for it down here. Not even my family. So I gave it to, the, to a charitable organization. Incorporated the Harlan Sanders Charitable Foundation and gave the stock, the whole $6 million company, to the charity. And that, for that reason, I've got about a thousand students on scholarships throughout the country in eight different colleges. Beautiful. And that's better than me getting, because if I got the income from that, it'd go for taxes. And as it is now, it's going great. And then crippled children's hospitals, 
and other hospitals, churches. It's just wonderful to, uh, I say that's where the Lord has saved me, I think, for that kind of a deal, don't you see? I believe to so. To do something for him. I see I'm trying to do it. There came a time after you had sold the Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise here, and you hit upon a particular hard time, not financially, but there were some disappointments in your life, and, and you made the statement to Claudia that if you could just make peace with your maker, that's that right. you'd like to go on home, be with the Lord. That's what we, I want to be sure we're right with that. Colonel, how Thanks long... Thanks to you boys for coming along. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, you've experienced the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You betcha. It's a great, great experience and the greatest experience I've had in my 89 years. Praise course. the Lord. 89 yeah. years of age. What do you think about your great-granddaughter receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior? I think that was one. I'm so proud because she was born and raised in a Catholic family. And Very devout and uh, a good family they were. Yes. And the Catholic religion's all right. Yes. Yes. If they just knew what made them Catholics, they don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but they're just as devout and a Catholic Christian, I guess, is just as good as any other Christian. And I have known some that were. But they don't have to ask some priest to intercede for them with the Lord. They can go straight to the Lord where they're talking their problems. That's exactly what you did. And that's, why, that's the way I think it ought to be done. I, I, I'm greatly concerned for a lot of the older people. You see, I was about, what, 77, wasn't it, 77. when I found the Lord? Right. I knew uh, I should have him. I knew I should walk with him. But I, I couldn't reach him. I, my sinfulness came in. You see, I used to curse terrible. Mm -hmm. Did it ever since uh, boyhood when I went to railroading. I got in the habit of it. And I, I wanted to quit for years and years, but I couldn't. I couldn't quit to save my life. I'd say I cursed by note. I could do the prettiest job of cursing everybody in the world. <laughs> but I, I know it was, it was my soul would go to hell. My tithing and going to church and living right with my fellow man and all, that's not going to get you to heaven. You've got to get God in your heart, and you've got to get in his heart, too. Amen. So I just say, I, I think, I hope that the people that have reached the later years of life and haven't accepted Christ as holy, and give themselves. I hope that they don't put it off too long. Well, listen, time's getting shorter all the time. Yes. See, for us. Yes, it is. And to the, I, there, I was fortunate enough to get by the last 77. How many of them died? 60, 65, That's 64. That's true. And 70, 80. They don't all get by. So it's been a great pay. I, have, I thank God, though, I have, I think, paid my debt a whole lot to him since then, since I would come into money and ability to do it, don't you see? Yes, yes. Because when I started this chicken business, I, I was sinful and all, but I prayed to God that if he'd make it a success, I'd see that his cause was always remembered and taken care of first. And you have. And I hope I have. Yes, you And have. still doing it. I've never believed that uh, I've got a strange philosophy there. It's crazy. No use being the richest man in the cemetery because you can't do any business in there. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's a good philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to fulfill my obligation to the Lord for bringing me through all those close calls, giving me health. I, have, I just don't know too many 89, 88-year-old men traveling a quarter of a million miles a year and doing their work like they always did. And good health, enjoying good health and everything. The Lord takes care of you. Yes, There's no does. question about it. Yes, he does.